G'day there, I'm Mark Waite and welcome to Mark My Words. On this channel, we help people fast track a comeback from a serious life setback. So if you've been through the mill and you've had either a, maybe a relationship setback that's cost you financially or maybe a business setback, then you're on the right channel. Hey, why not consider subscribing to it? That way when we upload a new video here on the channel, you'll be up to date with all that's happening. On this video today, I want to discuss with you and throw a question and maybe a challenge out to you. I know if you're looking at this, there's a chance that you may be recovering from a serious life setback. And life has a way of dealing challenges to us. Sometimes in the, at the hand of cards we get dealt are things that we don't expect or plan for or Sometimes they can come out of left field and hit you up the side of the head and you just have no clue where that come from. And it takes a while to adjust and to acclimatize to the new reality of what you face. And it does take some time sometimes to, to recover. I know in my situation back in uh, 2008, I was a casualty of the global financial crisis in more ways than one. My business had been... Uh, it basically affected, impacted catastrophically by the GFC and within weeks of that, my my marriage blew up as well. So I know what it's like to go through a tough time. And I was in a world of pain in 2008, I can tell you, in uh, not just financially, but in all other areas as well. So the good news is in all that, that I have rebuilt since then. And I'm in a better position today than I have ever been physically, mentally, spiritually, financially in all areas. And I... I was talking to some people today and I often get asked, you know, what what was the key thing that you did to rebuild in terms of, you know, financially? Because the reality of it is that <clears throat> a lot of people have now in 2020 an uncertain future financially. You know, it's it, the, the economy, we're heading into a global recession if we're not already there. And so there is an element of uncertainty around uh people's financial future and particularly if you've had a double whammy effect of a relationship breakdown you, you're actually going through more than just a financial crisis it, it is a, an emotional crisis as well i know it was for me and it took me a while to recover internally so i could then recover externally uh, but the reality of it is that sometimes we need to when we are in a place where we can think about this is to think about how are we going to rebuild and recover? And how can we fast track our comeback? To me, that is the big question when you are at a place where you're ready to get off the canvas and rebuild your life. And I'm not saying if you're had a, you've had a recent impact of a relationship breakdown or a financial setback that you are ready to make the or begin the journey of rebuilding because sometimes it takes a while to get to that place. But if you are there and you are ready to make a mighty comeback financially, most of it is, is determined by you know, how we think and how we um, approach our financial future. And you know, if, you're, if you're coming from a perspective of, um, of uh, wanting to fast track your financial comeback, you know, it, it's, it's, there's a couple of ways you can go about it. You can think in terms of uh, active, what you do uh, versus what you own. And when I first heard that, straight out of the back of my financial setback, I didn't own much. My balance sheet looked really light. I had more, more I owed more than I owned. I don't know if you can understand what that would be like. Maybe you do. Maybe that's where you're at right now. If you look at your balance sheet, your assets and your liabilities, you, <laughs> there's more value in the liability column than there is in the asset column. And that's where it was for me, you know, straight, of, straight out of my setback. But um, to rebuild, it's, it's a case of fast tracking your comeback. And to do that, I want to encourage you to start to begin to think about what you can do immediately in the short term to plug the holes financially but also what you can do in the medium to long term to create a value, to create an asset of saleable value that you can potentially cash out of to fast track your comeback. Now, before you tune out, 
and you think, well, that's not me, I want to challenge you to arrest that thought because I guarantee you within you, there is something that you uh, can see that no one else can. There is something that you, the, a gift that you have that no one else has. My, my personal belief is you're on the planet to add value to those in your world around you. And the more value you add, the more of a positive influence and impact you'll have on those people. But at the same time, you have the capacity to um, to create, and every one of us have the capacity to create. So, there's just want to talk about this for a minute. I mean, here, if you just jump on the whiteboard, if you can see that, it's a it's a quadrant, and you know, on the left hand side of the quadrant, it's it's to do with what we do physically to make money. And on the right hand side of the quadrant is it is what we own that makes money. So by definition, if you've ever read the book uh, Cash Flow Quadrant by Robert Kiyosaki, he talks about the definition of an asset is it is that it puts money in your pocket. The definition of a liability is it takes money out of your pocket. So it, when it comes to generating income and to fast track your financial comeback, ultimately a way to do that is to create assets and to build assets in terms of um, something that has a, the capacity to generate income whether you are physically involved in that business or not. See, over here he talks about being an employee, which means you're actually working for someone else's business as an employee, as an E. Um, and employee means... You get paid a salary. You basically get paid an amount to perform a service for that company. And hopefully the value that you add that company uh, to that company is greater than what it costs them to have you. Hopefully that's the case because if it's not, you may not have that job too much longer. Um, so as an employee, and also the other one is self-employed, right? So employee means you're trading hours for dollars. Right, so you work on a per per year basis, per hour, per whatever it is you do. Self-employed is the same, except the difference between here and here is that here you own your business, here you work for someone else who owns the business. But it's based on what you do. So if you turn up every day, you'll make money. You know, as a self-employed person, you might be a doctor or a, or a physician or a specialist of some sort. Your income earning capacity is in direct proportion to your ability to perform. If you can't perform, then your income is affected. Now, you think, well, I can, I can get insurance to to um, to protect me there. Yes, you can. But in terms of a saleable asset, have you got something that you can sell uh, as an employee or as a self-employed person? You know, if you take you out of that business, can it function without you? Now, for most self-employed business owners, the answer is no, because they are the magic of the business. They are the, the, the lifeblood of the business, right? That business wholly and solely relies on them turning up every day to perform whatever it is that business, those functions in that business are. So over here, it's what we call, you know, most businesses are called small business, S. Uh, S uh, stands for... Uh, Superman or Superwoman, right? You've got to be Superman or Superwoman to be able to front up every day all the time. You know, most people work 48 weeks a year for 45 years of their life um, to get to 65 years of age and fall off the financial cliff, right? That's not that's not being negative. That's just the reality of it, right? You know, 48 weeks a year on and four weeks a year off. Four, 48 weeks a year for them and 48, four weeks a year for you. You know, 48 weeks a year times 45 years. I mean, the average person starts work at 20 years of age and works through to 65 years of age. That's 45 years. Now, if you would do the sums, right, uh, you know, 40 hours a week times 48 weeks a year, it's per year, equals, uh, that's 86,400 hours the average person will work in a lifetime. And, and, and to get to a point where hopefully you've got some savings, hopefully you've paid off your house, hopefully you've paid, bought some investments and paid them off, and hopefully you've got some superannuation or forced savings collected 
so that you've got some compulsory, you can be self-employed or, sorry, self-reliant in, in retirement. Now, the reality of it is that most people aren't. Uh, most people don't have enough funds put away to be able to retire successfully uh, and be self-reliant. They have to be reliant on the government to, to, to pay, a, pay them a pension, to, to live a, you know, a lifestyle which is you know, <laughs> reduced upon retirement, which is, which is sad when you think about it. May not be the case for you. Let's hope not, right? But that's the case for the majority of people who are in the E quadrant and the, the, S, the S quadrant. Over on this side, it's what you own. So here is what we call a business owner, B, or an investor. So a B, a business owner, is someone who has a business, but they're not rely. It's not reliant on them. So the key word here, in, as a business owner, is system. Okay, so we have a system that is able to be built into the business that enables you to have uh, a degree of freedom from that business. So it's not reliant on you, it's systematized. Okay, and then we generate the business. And the other thing is with this, as a, because it's systematized, it has the potential to scale and to get big without you and to multiply. As a self-employed person, you know, if you are all about you, there's only so many uh, things you can do in a day to earn a quid, right? Earn money. There's only so many customers you can service. There's only so many clients you can look after. There's only so many patients you can serve, right? So there's a limit to what you can earn over here. Whereas a business owner, because of the system, it has the capacity to scale and multiply. And as a result, the income earning potential is unlimited. Now, if you think about, you know, franchises, for example, McDonald's, right? When Ray Kroc first bought the first McDonald's franchise um, off the McDonald's brothers back in the 50s, you know, he, his dream for that business was to, uh, he, he liked the, the, the business model, he liked the concept, the restaurant, but he created a system called McDonald's and he systematized that one restaurant into a second restaurant, a third restaurant, and now there's a McDonald's restaurant in every major city in Australia, and in the world for that matter. Ray Kroc, his, his vision was never to become the hamburger king. If you read his story, his vision was always to become a real estate king. He, he, he had a dream to buy real estate, and he used hamburgers to create cash flow to buy real estate. So it's an amazing story how he systematized a business to achieve his real goal was to become a real estate king. And, uh, you know, apparently the McDonald's family now own more real estate than the Catholic Church, which is interesting. Um, but so, you know, have a, think about uh, what you can do to, to systematize yourself, to actually give you the capacity to scale <clears throat> and it can grow and the potential income can be more unlimited as it compared to being limited over here as, a, as an S. And then the cash flow that you generate from a business like that, you can plow down into in I being an in investments, right? So investor. And here's where you buy assets, right? Other income producing assets that create cash flow. So you have, you have cash flow from your assets, you have cash flow from your business, and it becomes a cycle. You can use the cash flow to buy more assets. And so you end up becoming, you have this compounding creative um, unlimited income earning potential, asset generation potential. And then because it's systematized, this business, it doesn't rely on you. So as a, as a commercial entity, as a saleable asset, that, that has a tremendous appeal in the marketplace for a potential investor to buy. So it's saleable. Here, over in the S side, it's, it's not saleable because you can't sell you. <laughs> <laughs> you take you out of it, it's worth nothing, right? Whereas over here, if you take you out of it, it's still worth something because it still generates income. So the key is that 95% of people end up on the, on the left-hand side of the, the quadrant and 5% of income earners are on the right-hand side of the quadrant. But the reality is that 5% own and uh, generate you know, more, more than 95% of the income. Because they understand that it's, it's more about what you own that produces your income as opposed to what you do that produces your income. Now, what's that got to do with you and I? Well, if you're in the place right now, you're in your mid-40s or 50s, 
or 30s or even 60s and you've had a setback and you're starting from scratch financially, it's going to be really difficult to rebuild financially being an E or an S. You have to start thinking about sooner or later what can you do to get on the right hand side of the quadrant as a B and or an I, business owner or an investor. Because once you create a business or a source of income that is systematized and enables you to leverage and scale, you then have a saleable asset which has a multiple value. So for example, you know, if you had a, a, a business that had uh, a, a generate an annual income, net income of over say, say two or three hundred thousand dollars, say a hundred thousand dollars, that has a saleable asset. It's generally worth in the marketplace at least three or four times what that annual net income is. So now you're starting to look at some serious asset accumulation, asset uh, appreciation, as opposed to over here where you're just making an income and it's just a harder way to go about it, particularly if you're advanced in years and you want to make a mighty comeback in your life. So what are you doing to fast track your financial comeback? I'd be curious to know. Leave a comment in the comment section just to let us know what you're up to because it is amazing that when you start to adjust our when we start to adjust our thinking and sort of start to transition across to the right hand side of the quadrant as opposed to the left hand side this is what we were taught at school this is what our parents taught us you know parents that have come out of a say a second world war or thereabouts that had a different mindset towards money and security than people who create wealth today um, you know, th th this is what's taught at school, how to do things, whereas entrepreneurs teach how to own things and how to create systems to generate a, a capacity to work your way out of work, a capacity to make money while you sleep. That's how you fast track your comeback from where you're at today if you are in your mid-50s or 60s or even 40s. Okay, you can spend the next five years creating a business, a B quadrant business, a systematized business, generate the cash flow to buy assets and create that cycle of duplication. You will fast track your comeback in a, in a very dynamic way. So if you like this video, consider subscribing to this channel and you might want to check out also a couple of links I've provided for you in the descriptions panel below. One of those links is to my 10 breakthrough steps. These are 10 breakthrough steps that I took to help me fast track my comeback from my serious life setback back over 10 years ago now. They're yours today free. I will ask you for your email address. I'll be able to email those straight to your inbox. But check those out, 10 breakthrough steps. You can apply those to your world and they'll help you fast track your comeback just like they helped me fast track mine. There's also a link to a free webinar on the uh, in the in the panel below as well. Check that out. It's, it's, a, it's a powerful webinar on what I did to fast track and rebuild from scratch at 42 years of age. So check that one out as well. I'm sure you'll get some value from that. So thank you for joining me today. I hope this video has added some value and challenged you in some way around thinking differently about your financial future. The truth is your best days are ahead. However, it will require a change of mindset, perhaps, if we're over here and we want to get over here to fast track our mighty comeback. Until next time, I'll see you on the next video.